Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, people fail most of the times because of labels that they believe in. Do not label yourself anything negative. I'm a C student, I'm weak, I'm not attractive. Some people will put negative labels on you. He is average, he is not good enough. And if you believe them, you will fail and you will never succeed. The first label that we get in our life is when we are born, our name. And the Prophet ﷺ said, on the day of resurrection, you will be called by your names and your father's names. So choose good names. So the Prophet ﷺ is ordering us, a part of our duty as parents is to call our children beautiful names. And naming a child with a beautiful name and an honorable name is very important. Don't make their life miserable. If you call them a funny name, their life will be miserable. One of the women that won a, a medal, a gold medal in the Winter Olympic in skiing, her name was Peekaboo Street. Their, her parents, for five years, they used to call her girl. And then they had to admit her to school, to get her to school. So they told them, you have to have a name for the girl. We cannot call her girl. So they went to get a, a birth certificate. And they remembered they live on a street called Peekaboo Street. So they called her Peekaboo Street. Is that something you do to your child? All your young age, people making fun of you? Because you thought it's cute? Some people do different Muslim people, and I, I've seen that many times. They tell you you want to get a blessing for our child. So what do they do? They close their eyes, open the Quran, and put their finger on a word. And they call the child whatever word that's going to come out. Not every word in the Quran is appropriate to be used as a name for a child. Evil deeds, sayyah. Are you going to call your child sayyah? There is a chapter called Al-Baqarah, cow. You're going to call your child cow? There is in the, in the Quran, nar, hellfire. So use your head. I've seen some strange name and they tell me it's from the Quran. Not every word in the Quran. The Prophet ﷺ said, call them honorable name, good names. And you're not going to get a blessing by calling them a wrong name. The Prophet ﷺ changed the companion's name. Sayyidina Umar, before he became Muslim, he had a daughter born, a little girl. And he called her Asiya, disobedient. After he became Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ changed her name to Jamila, beautiful. Another companion, his name was Harban, war. The Prophet ﷺ changed his name to Salman, peace. So having a good name is very important. That's the first label you're going to have. And it will have a major impact on your life. You become what you believe. You can, if you believe you can, you will. If you believe you cannot, you will not. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran is teaching us not to use negative labels. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَصْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَتُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا Say, O oh my servant who have transgressed, committed injustice against themselves, do not despair of the mercy of Allah. Surely Allah forgives all sins. So Allah is telling you, if you believe that you have a label, I'm a sinner, I'm hopeless, I'm no good, there is no hope for me. Allah is saying, throw that label away. Put a label on your head, I'm forgiven. That's what Allah is saying. I'm, for, I'm forgiven. Whatever sins you did, I'll forgive you. This is the kind of label you should have. Not say, oh, I committed so much bad deeds in my life. I commit so many sins. No hope for me. No. You have to believe you're forgiven. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and in addition, erase the negative labels that fill your mind and fill your mind with your, the right thoughts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us the same thing in the Quran. Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam was visited by angels that came in a form of human being to talk to him about Qawm Lut, the people of Lot. They came to talk to him. And then when they were sitting with Sayyidina Ibrahim, his wife walked in. When she walked in, they gave her the good news from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that she's going to have a son and his name is going to be Ishaq, Isaac, alayhi salam. And the son, when he's going to grow up, he's going to have a son. And his name will be Yaqub, Jacob. So look at what the woman did. She answered them back saying, قَالَتْ لَا يَا وَيْلَتَا أَأَلِدُ وَأَنَا عَجُوزٌ وَهَذَا بَعْلِ شَيْخَ إِنَّ هَذَا لَشَيْءٌ عَجِيبٌ قَالُوا أَتَعْجَبِينَ مِنْ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ She said, oh wonder, shall I bear a son when I'm an old woman? She was over 90. And this is my husband, an old man. Surely this is a strange thing. The angel said, do you wonder at the ruling, the decisions of Allah? Look at what she did. When they gave her the good news, immediately she remembered the negative labels. I'm very old. My husband is old. So what they did, the angel answered her, you don't believe in the power of Allah? Those labels mean nothing for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are the one who's putting those labels over your head, not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So don't believe in any of those negative labels. Believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And sometimes the labels that are going to be put on you by people, your boss. Uh, you're, you're not a great worker. You're okay, but you're not a great worker. Or some teachers. Teachers say, I don't think you're college material. So people believe that. They believe those are people of authority. They believe them. My, my teacher said, I'm not college material. So I'm going to just go finish high school and go look for a job and you don't pursue your your goals your dreams your the things that allah created you for sometimes friends you don't have the nice, the right personality so anybody who gives you negative label ignore it but the most dangerous people that can put negative labels on you is your parents that's the most dangerous people that can put labels on you because you tend to believe your parents. And sometimes parents, they will tell you, you know, you're not smart as smart as your sister. You put a negative label on your son. You're withholding his potential. Sometimes they will say, you're not as beautiful. Or you don't have a strong personality like your cousin. Don't do that to your children. Whatever you say to your children will have a long-term damage on your children. Say to them something positive, something encouraging, something that will make them move forward, not hold them back. The Prophet ﷺ did that with one of the companions. One of the companions came to the Prophet ﷺ and asked him as a beggar, he said, I need some money or some food. Beggar. So the Prophet ﷺ asked him, do you have anything in your home? You have nothing? He said, I have a piece of cloth and a pot. That's all I own. So the Prophet ﷺ told him, go bring them. And the, he brought the two pieces. And the Prophet ﷺ auctioned those two pieces. In the masjid, all the companions sitting, he auctioned them. How much you buy this piece of cloth? He found somebody willing to pay one dirham. And how much he was willing to buy for this pot, he found one person willing to pay one dirham. So he got two dirhams, that's all he got. So he gave them to the man and he said to him, take one dirham and buy some food for your family. And take the other dirham and buy a rope and an axe. And then I want you to take the rope and axe and go and cut and gather wood and sell it. And I don't want you to come back here for 15 days. After 15 days, come and tell me what did you do? The man did exactly what the Prophet ﷺ told him. After 15 days, he came back and he said to him, I have 10 dirhams. What did the Prophet ﷺ do? 
He changed the label on his head. The person walked into the Prophet with the label, I'm a beggar, I'm poor, I don't have anything. And he changed his label to, I'm a businessman, I can make money, I can support my family. That's what he did. And you, you notice, the Prophet ﷺ, so he doesn't make him feel that he's a beggar or a poor. He didn't ask the companion to say, I want to raise some money for this man. He would have raised hundreds of dirhams. But he said, who wants to buy this? So he kept his dignity. He made him feel that you are a person that's important. You're not a beggar. You're not nobody. And he turned his attitude from being a beggar to a businessman. And that's how you turn the labels. That's how you change yourself. We have to remember, if you have a label over your head that says, I'm poor, I don't have money. You have many other labels. You are rich in health. You are rich in strength. You are rich in personality. You are rich in skills. You have so much. Take what you have and make the most of it. Don't always focus on what you don't have, on the negative labels. Look at the positive labels. Some people will tell you, you know what? I have all the wrong labels. What you're telling me doesn't make any sense. I'm broke. I'm in debt. I don't have the right degrees. I don't know the right people. Nothing. I'm, there is nothing I have. The problem is they're <laughs> underestimating what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them. They're underestimating. They're looking at all the things that they don't have. But they, can, they are not looking at all the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them may look to them small and insignificant. Allah knows who you are, your situation that you are in, and what you have. Use what you have been given. It's all you need right now. If Allah knew that you need more money, He would have given you more money. In the situation you're in, what you have is everything you need in this, at that point. And when you need more, Allah will give you more. Trust Allah. Don't believe in those negative labels. I don't have, I don't have, I don't have. No, you have a lot. But you're not focusing on what Allah gave you. You're focusing on what you don't have. I'll tell you a story that happened to me. Many years ago, somebody gave me a gift, a beautiful plant. It's called African Violet. The African Violet has beautiful flowers and beautiful leaves. It's beautiful. And I took it home. When the person gave it to me, I said to the person, you know, I have a brown thumb. Brown thumb is an expression that I'm not good with plants. They die with me. So I took it home. And you know what? I followed every instruction that was written with the little label with it. Water it so many times and put it in that place. I followed everything exactly. Within a couple of months, it was dying. The flowers fell off. The leaves were turning brown. Everything was horrible. I took that plant to a co-worker, a lady that was working with me. And that woman, everybody said she has a green thumb. I gave her the plant. And I said, can you do anything about it? She said, of course. I'm going to make her healthy. It's going to look good. It's going to be fine. She took the plant and I kept an eye on her. Is she doing anything that I'm not doing? She was doing exactly what I did. Watering the plant at the same time, putting it in the same place, all of that. Two months later, I took the plant home. My wife couldn't believe it. She thought I bought a new plant. It was so healthy, full of flowers, beautiful. But it's what I believed affected the plant. If you believe you're going to be bad, you will be bad. If you're going to believe you're going to be successful, you will be successful. If you believe you're going to be a failure, you will be a failure. You become what you believe. Eleanor Roosevelt, the wife of the president, Franklin Roosevelt, she has a beautiful quote. She said, no one can make you inferior without your permission. If anybody says anything bad, if you keep it in your head, you give them permission to affect you. If they say you're average and you kept it in your head, you believed it, then you give them permission. But if they say you're average and you throw it out, you don't care, 
If they say anything negative and you say, I don't care. Allah didn't create me like that. You throw it out. Then you're not giving them permission. The Prophet ﷺ in the battle of Khaybar, they were, the Muslims were surrounding a fort, a castle. And the non-believers were hiding inside that castle. And for several days, they couldn't penetrate that castle. They couldn't. And then one day they found the door open and a shepherd and some sheep came out. The shepherd went directly to, toward the, the Muslims and said, what is the prophet? And they pointed him to the, to the, to the shepherd. He went to the prophet and he said, what are you inviting people to? So the prophet I'm inviting them to Islam. That you witness that there is no God but Allah and, I'm, and I am the messenger of Allah. And you do not worship but Allah. So he said, what if I do that? He said, if you do that and, and die, you will enter paradise. So look at the, sla the, the, the shepherd. He told him all the negative labels that's on his head. All of them. He said, I'm a slave. I'm ugly looking. I have a horrible smell. Disgusting clothes. I have no wealth. Would Allah let me get into paradise? He said, yes. He told him all the negative labels. So he told him, the Prophet, he answered him, all those negative labels means nothing. Yes, you will get into paradise. So the battle started. Before the battle started, the shepherd said to the Prophet, I have those sheep. I want to stay with you. And I have those sheep. People trusted me with those sheep. What should I do? Should I take them back? He said, no. Direct them toward the castle and throw some rocks on those sheep. They are, Allah is going to guide them to the castle. This piece is very important. Muslims are in war with the people in the castle. He didn't say, let's keep them. Somebody trusted you with something even in the battle. If you are trusted with something, you have to fulfill the trust. So he sent them back. The battle started. And after the battle, the companions came to the Prophet ﷺ and they said to him, you know that shepherd that became Muslim? He said, yes. They said he died. The Prophet went to the shepherd and took off his coat and covered him with his coat and was crying. And he looked at him and he said, I see him in paradise. His face is beautiful. His clothes are beautiful. His smell is beautiful. And he never prayed one raka, never prayed one prayer. The labels mean nothing. The labels mean nothing. Shaitan makes you believe those labels. He put the labels in your mind to prevent you from reaching the great things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created you for. He doesn't want you to achieve that. So he makes you believe that. I'm average. I don't have talent. I'm not that smart. I'm not that, pers I don't have that funny personality. I'm not attractive. All those negative things. Shaitan wants you to stay down, not to succeed. Wants Muslim to be failure. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create any human being with negative labels. He did not. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala breathed in us. He breathed in our father Adam. Every one of us has a breath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He did not create us to fail and be miserable. He created us to be successful, strong, healthy, and talented. He created us to make a positive difference in the world. And not just that, He wants us to make a difference in everybody around us, in the people's life around us. See the positive in people, believe in them, call them positive names, don't be the one that call them negative names. Be the difference maker in the life of everybody around you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَلَا تَنَابَزُوا بِالْأَلْقَابِ nor insult each other by offensive nicknames. So don't be, as a Muslim, you should never call somebody a negative name. Never. Never. Look at the positive. Always. Even if the person is not that talented, you, you can tell them, you have potential. You can learn. Look at the positive. Don't look at the negative and don't label people negative things. Sometimes people 
enjoy bullying others. You hear that a lot of time. They look at somebody like, you know, who's smart in school or whatever, and they call them, you're a nerd, you're a geek, all those names. And you know, I hear that sometimes, and I tell those young kids, I say, don't worry about that. Who cares about those names? One day, those people will be working for you. Because you are going to succeed, and they are going to be nowhere. So don't worry about those names. They mean nothing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person that I know, he immigrated to this country. And when he immigrated, he sat with a couple of people from his native country to ask them for advice. What should I do? And what they told him is, number one, your English is not great. You don't have an American degree. You don't have American experience. So our advice to you is go and work at a gas station or a supermarket. So he said, didn't tell them, but he said to himself, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought me from my country, brought me here, so I can pump gas or bag grocery. No way. Allah has something better for me to do. And he threw their labels to him, threw them in the garbage. Twelve years later, this same person became the president of a mid-sized company with hundreds of employees working for him. Just imagine if he believed those labels. What would he be today? But he believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He didn't believe in what people said to him. And it made a difference in his life. So believe in Allah. Don't care about anybody who tells you negative labels. Don't care about them. Believe that Allah created you to be a success. Allah never forgot you. Allah didn't shortchange you. You have everything you need. Allah can take you beyond what your talent and education say you should be. More than that, it is not just enough to have faith in Allah that is important. But you must have faith in what Allah has given you. Whatever talent you have, whatever you have, have faith in it. Allah knows that's all you need. Remove any label that's holding you back. You are the right person for the job. You have the right labels. You have what it takes. Be confident in who you are. Allah wants you to step up with confidence and to start to move forward.